In a previous blog, I talked about how if you pay attention in camera when you're capturing an image, that you can actually do away with the need of using Photoshop or certainly the need to use Photoshop to a large degree on an image. However, in this blog, I'm going to contradict myself somewhat. Some images require, or indeed some images deserve, an extra bit of polish that Photoshop can give you. This is an image of Irish model Lisa Peters, who shot with me there recently on the weekend. Lisa is an Irish model, very charming, very beautiful, very tall in fact. Um, and in reality what I was trying to create is a beauty shot of, of Lisa. So looking at the image on screen from this distance, all in all it's an okay Im image. However, what I really want to do is give the image that polish that it needs. So one of the first things I need to do is I need to take care of some just tidy up or some house cleaning. My sensor is extremely dirty and here on the right hand side we can see that there's areas of the um, picture that have dust bunnies. This was shot at f16 so unfortunately every dust bunny is really going to show up. So using the spot healing brush over here on the left hand side over these dummies I simply click on them and each one it is painstaking, it is slow, but I just click on each one and I clone out all the spots first. So I'll end up with something like this. The next step, if we look at it, is we were using a wind machine on the day because we wanted the hair to be quite, um, quite wild and quite free. Unfortunately, the disadvantage about this is you will end up with hairs on the forehead. Um, we can see here there are some stray hairs coming across the eyes, coming across the cheek. I really like this one across the lip. I would leave it. Um, but well, we can see that there's definitely some hairs here across her chin. All of these need to be removed. My approach for removing um, um, hairs is to go to the healing brush. Pick a brush that's not much wider than a human hair. Click an area, alt click an area beside the hair you want to clone. And then just brush over the hair bit by bit. This is painstaking. It does take time. Um, you tend to give up after a while and do a worse job. But if you take your time and do it carefully, you can actually clone out a lot of hairs, even in very, very difficult areas. I also want to clean up some of this hair. So we can see after I've cleaned up the hairs, I'm left with a much, much cleaner design or cleaner image. Even across the eye, if we turn this back on, we can see previously we had got hairs coming across the eye. These are gone now, no problem whatsoever. Once this is done, the next thing I need to look at is the fact that even though Lisa has very beautiful skin, very, very clear skin, there are some blemishes, there are some shines that I want to get rid of. A lot of this is also down to the lighting I was using. I was using a beauty light, which is reasonably harsh lighting um, and really only suits people with good skin like Lisa. So we can see there's a slight blemish here, we have some shiny areas here, we have some spots here. And the tool I use is the Portature plugin from ImageMonic. After this, I run it through it, we can see that it cleans up the image very, very well. Now, you can see here on the right-hand side, I definitely need to use a mask. Um, ImageMonic does actually try to determine what skin and what isn't skin. Obviously, if skin very closely matches hair, it does get confused. So I'm using a mask to brush out um, the areas that I don't want the blur applied to. For instance, I don't want it applied to the hair, I don't want it applied to the lips, I don't want it applied to the eyes. And all in all, we get a pretty pleasing image in terms of skin. After the skin, I'm just going to retouch the eyes somewhat. Really what I want to do with the eyes is I would never actually brighten the eyes. I hate big bright eyes, but rather than having white brightened, what I can do is I can use the burn tool just to darken down the shadow details here. And I'll probably just give a little bit of detail to the, to the corners here or the rings of the eyes by using the burn tool as well. Another thing we can see is we do have some greasy areas here, which everybody suffers from. I would hesitate to call them bags because you know, they're really not in this, in Lisa's case. Um, but to get rid of these, I typically use the patch tool. I grab the area around the eye, drag it down to a clear piece of area, and then I use the clone tool about 25% just to brush detail back in. And what you should be left with is, this is prior to the eye healing step, and this is after. And we can see it's just, it's reasonably subtle. Looking at this, it looks like it's a huge change, but it's reasonably subtle just doing it. We can see the details coming in around the eyes and so on. Um, one last thing I want to do is I can still see I have a bit of skin blemish here. I still have a bit of shine here that I don't like and I still have a little bit of shine here I don't like. So what I do again is I actually run the whole image through the portraiture plugin again, blurring everything again. But this time I'm only actually brushing in the areas that I want. So we can see this is prior to the 
um, plugin being applied for the second time, and this is after. Similarly up here, this is prior. Sorry, this is after, and this is prior. So very, very subtle changes. Similarly here, prior and after. Once I'm happy with the actual um, image processing, the actual individual pixels, next thing I do is a defog, just a local contrast enhancement, followed by a sharpening. So there's my defog. Let's just turn that on and off so you can see. And then there's my sharpening. Now, with sharpening, I do not sharpen everything. There was no point in treating the skin and then trying to sharpen it. So I use a mask again, just to make sure that I'm only sharpening the eyes, I'm only sharpening the hair, the lips, the clothing. I'm not sharpening any of the skin detail on the face or the arms. That's all left unsharpened. Final touches just for taste. I do a hue saturation. I'm taking down the red channel and, and the yellow channel just a little bit, just to kind of get take a little bit of coloration out of it. This is just a taste. And finally, I bring in the white point and drag up the image to brighter a bit in levels. So all in all, there is a before and there's an after. Just a bit of polish. Um, Obviously what I can do is then, is once everything's done, I could actually change the opacity to suit. So if I want to just bring it down to something like 75%, there's my after, there's my before.